Daily Minutes nummer 1479 met een uitzending voor vandaag 24 november 2018. Dat is het bulletin van zaterdag. This bulletin will be almost completely in English with at the end a piece of data in the latest standard of MFSK32. Use the newest version of FLDigi. Minimum you must have 4.0.18 to decode. Vandaag nieuws in het Engels en op het laatste stuk data in MFSK 32. Je moet hiervoor de nieuwste versie van FLDigi gebruiken, minimaal 4.0.18, anders krijg je de afbeeldingen die erin zitten niet te zien. Omdat er vanwege Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving moet ik zeggen, het festijn waarbij op grote schaal dode kalkoenen worden gegeten geen ERRL audio nieuws is, doen we het vandaag met het nieuws door de oudste en eerste landelijke amateurvereniging die er is, de WIA in Australië. From Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service on RF, internet streaming and text at wia.org.au. Good evening, I'm Graham, VK4 Baker Baker. This is the WIA National News for week commencing November 25, 2018. And it's good morning if you're listening to the Sunday edition. Early Wednesday, Queensland-based Black Sky Aerospace conducted Australia's first ever launch carrying commercial payloads from the nation's only suborbital launch site in Gundawindi, Queensland. BSA's 5-metre-tall CITER-190 sounding rocket soaring to approximately 20,000 foot. The CITER-190 rocket has a mass of 80 kilograms and is propelled using solid fuel consisting of aluminium and ammonium chloride. The launch Wednesday carried experimental payloads, including some for Hypersonics, another Australian launch startup developing the world's first hypersonic scramjet launch vehicle. Here, Hypersonics tested sensor packages as well as a ceramic matrix composite panel, which the company plans on using for its own launch vehicles. The CITER 190 also carried a device developed by the Kunu Technologies targeting skydivers an enhanced altimeter that also has a 3D location tracker, flight analyzer and a situational awareness tool that can gather flight data. BSA is currently working on a range of suborbital rockets and is positioning itself as a suborbital payload delivery system. This first BSA launch marks the beginning of Australia's commercial launch industry. Labor commits $2 million to resurrect ABC shortwave radio. The Northern Territory Country Hour report that, if elected next year, Federal Labor say they will provide the ABC with $2 in funding to help re-establish shortwave radio services across the Northern Territory. The ABC controversially switched off its shortwave service in January 2017 and, defending the decision by saying it would only affect a very, very small amount of people and save taxpayers up to $1.9 million. The decision was heavily criticised at the time by industry groups such as the Northern Territory Cattlemen's Association and the NT Seafood Council. NTCA President Chris Nutt welcomed the new announcement by Labor and said the ABC's decision had been short-sighted. What people take for granted in the cities is a luxury for those of us in the bush, Mr Nott said. We rely on the HF shortwave radio transmitters because we don't have mobile and data coverage for AM and FM radio stations. Federal Member for Solomon, Luke Gosling, said the axing of shortwave had angered a lot of people and community groups. Many thousands will benefit if shortwave is brought back, he told the Country Hour. Across Australia from VK1WIA, you're tuned to the WIA National News Service. In the Spencer Gulf area of South Australia, it can be heard at the VK5 RMN 2 metre repeater, 146.70 MHz at 0900 local time, and on the VK5 RDC digital ATV repeater, 446.50 MHz at 1900 local time. I'm Alex, VK5 ALX. <laughs> I am WIA Director Peter, VK8ZZ. I'd like to cover four topics this week. First up, WIA Board Elections. 
The November-December issue of Amateur Radio Magazine should be in your hands in the next few days. In this issue, you will see on the reverse side of the address label is the nomination form for the upcoming vacancies on the WIA board. The formal notification of the WIA board election is included in the magazine proper. Nominations close at the end of January, followed by an election. Nominations can only be posted or hand-delivered to the National Office. I encourage any member who is keen to participate in the management of the WIA to nominate for a position on the board. Next up, social media. The WIA is looking to invigorate its social media presence. In order to do this, we are seeking the expertise and experience of social media gurus to join a team to assist in this area. Social media will be used to foster and encourage existing and potential Foundation licensees. Next is the 2020 AGM and Conference. The WIA are keen to hear from clubs that would like to take on the exciting role of organising the 2020 AGM and Conference. While this event is not until the year after next, we are keen to start early. The event, of course, is underwritten by the WIA. Please contact the Secretary for more details. And finally, International Band Planning Representation. At the recent IARU Region 3 conference in Seoul, Korea, a proposal to establish the Region 3 Band Planning Committee was passed. Mr Sion, 9 Mike 2 Charlie Quebec Charlie, was appointed the, t- the committee coordinator. The IARU have already published the terms of reference for this committee. The terms of reference provide that a band planning committee will comprise of 10 committee members from Region 3 member societies, which includes the WIA. The WIA are therefore seeking expressions of interest from members who have the black background and ability to participate as the Australian representative on that committee. Expressions of interest or queries should be directed to the WIA Secretary in the next few days, as the timeline for nominations is extremely short. I am WIA Director Peter, VK8ZZ. Good DXing. From Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA Amateur Radio News Service on RF, internet streaming and text at wia.org.au. International news with thanks to IARU, RSGB, SARL, Southgate Amateur Radio Club, ARRL, RAC, NZART and the worldwide sources of the WIA. I'm Jason, VK2LAW. NASA's Mars Interior Exploration Using Seismic Investigations, Geodesy and Heat Transport InSight Lander is scheduled to touch down on the Red Planet at approximately 8pm UTC, November 26. And viewers everywhere can watch coverage of the event live on NASA television, the agency's website and social media platforms. Launched on May 5, InSight marks NASA's first Mars landing since the Curiosity rover in 2012. The landing will kick off a two-year mission in which InSight will become the first spacecraft to study Mars's deep interior. Its data will also help scientists understand the formation of all rocky worlds, including our own. InSight is being followed to Mars by two mini-spacecraft comprising of NASA's MarsCube-1, MARCO, the first deep space mission for CubeSats. If MARCO makes its planned Mars flyby, it will attempt to relay data from InSight as it enters the planet's atmosphere and lands. InSight and MARCO flight controllers will monitor the spacecraft's entry, descent and landing from mission control at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, where all landing events will take place. About 80 live viewing events for the public to watch the InSight landing will take place around the world. News from India In India, recognition is coming posthumously for one silent key who authored a book about India's space program. Electronics engineer Ved Prakash Sanlas, Victor Uniform 2, Victor Papa, never lived to see the publication of his book, The Leapfroggers, an insider's account of ISRO. Ved became a silent key in 2017 and the book was published just months ago. It tells the story of how the Indian Space Research Organisation, ISRO, developed its launch vehicles from scratch. The U2VP became a licensed ham radio operator whilst an undergraduate studying for his physics degree. His radio hobby 
later became invaluable to his work at the space agency when he was given the responsibility of developing a communication system for the Indian space program's satellite launch vehicle. News from Europe, Silent Keys, Silent No More. A Silent Key memorial contest held on November 1st was more of an on-air memorial to departed friends than a competitive activity. This marked the sixth year since Laszlo Foldy, Hotel Alpha 6 November Lima, and Laszlo Dallos, Hotel Alpha 7 Papa Lima, conceived this tribute held in CW. The 1st of November is a day that Hungarians honour their dead. This wireless activity has grown to include between 50 and 70 hams, most of them in Europe, reflecting band conditions on 80 and 40 metres. Even the form of QSL is special. Hams get an ornamental memorial leaf with the call sign of the silent key they have honoured by sending their call sign on the air. From the United Kingdom, the RSGB at UK Spectrum Policy Forum. It's vital that we contribute to the debate around spectrum use. Former RSGB Chairman Graham Murchie, Golf 4 Fox Sierra Golf, recently made a presentation on behalf of all UK radio amateurs to the UK Spectrum Policy Forum, a body that advises the government. He also led the subsequent discussion, supported by RSGB General Manager Steve Thomas, Mike One Alpha Charlie Bravo, and RSGB Spectrum Forum Chair Murray Neiman, Golf 6 Juliet Yankee Bravo. Topics included the shortage of practical skills in the radio arena, the social and economic aspects of spectrum use, and examples of where the RSGB is encouraging development of scarce skills and using them to good effect. News from Canada, out amongst the maple leaves. Radio Amateurs of Canada is pleased to announce its support of the Canadian National Parks on the Air event, which will be held next year, all year, January 1 to December 31. All radio amateurs worldwide will have an opportunity to operate portably from any of Canada's 48 national parks and 171 national historic sites. These are activators. Amateurs from around the world will be able to chase these adventurous operators in an effort to confirm the most QSOs. These are the chasers. Activity for activators and chasers will be tracked on a dedicated website and real-time leaderboard and other statistics will be available throughout the year. Activators and chasers will be able to compete for and collect online awards and certificates created specifically for the event. For more information about the event, please visit the Canadian National Parks on the Air website at https cnpota.ca. The expedition are going the distance at 83. We introduce a YL who's an octogenarian heading to Africa. Karen Eve Murray, Kilo Delta 2 Golf Uniform Tango, editor of the Amateur Radio Newsline, shares her story. An amateur radio ticket can also be a ticket to living one's dreams, and perhaps no one knows that better right now than Susan Meckley, W7KFI. Susan is headed to Malawi, where in a few days she and her friend Don Jones, K6ZO, will be on a de-expedition through early December, operating CW as 7Q7M and 7Q6M, respectively. Retired from both the U.S. Navy and the Army, the Mississippi resident says she's always been up for adventure. Yes, even at 83 years of age. Susan, who's had her ticket since 1952, cruised the Pacific solo aboard her 32-foot sailboat until she came ashore when she turned 80. Her next big moment was to fly a World War II fighter plane, but then Don Jones came along with another option. They would travel to the rare African DX entity where he is involved in a project assisting a local hospital, and they'd operate before, after, and during the CQ Worldwide CW contest. Her rationale for changing her plans? Yeah, the plane would have been for an hour, and the uh, other trip is for an extended period of time. Though they'll be living in the hospital guest quarters, there might be some camping involved, which in Africa, of course, means lions. I am worried about that. I just might bow out of that because with my luck, I would get the 10% that didn't get the memo. She wants to make as many contacts as possible, of course, but she has another goal. Get out alive and come back home. The trip will mean that this devoted rag chewer will finally get to experience her first contest, too. She considers this trip one grand last hurrah. Well, 
When I first got into radio back in the early 50s, I read about Danny Wheel and his uh, Yapi Yasmi. And I said, my gosh, I want to do that. And my whole life has been planned to get military retirement, Social Security, and disappear off into the sunset. So I've gone to some of the islands and places I've been I wasn't too sure about. I've had some, I've had some adventures out there. You can be a part of her next adventure starting on the 22nd of November. Listen for Susan, 7Q7M, and Don, 7Q6M, sending CQ in CW. That will be the sound of Susan Meckley, age 83, saying QSL to one more big ham radio dream. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT. Thanks, Karen, and thanks to all who've tuned in today to WIA National News. From Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. News, talk and radio sport, here with VK1WIA. Ham Radio Operational News, it's a contact sport. I'm Felix, VK4FUQ. This weekend, Spring Contest of 2018, Saturday 24 and Sunday 25 November. Also, that weekend we'll see the CQ WWDX CW contest, November 24-25. December 2, Straight Key Night. New Zealand Straight Key Night, normally held on the first Sunday in November. Will be held this year on the first Sunday in December. That is December 2. 9pm to 10pm on 80 metres. SKN honours the roots of amateur radio. Morse code sent with a straight key. No bugs, side swipers, keys or keyboards. All levels of CW skill are welcome in the event. There are certificates for the three stations working the most QSOs, and all participants are invited to nominate an operator for the Best Fest award. SKN has the Yankee Exchange that includes not just RST, but also type of key, type of transmitter and power output. There are special log sheets available so it's easy to keep track of this information. 2019. Inaugural Green Keys Night set for New Year's Day, January 1. NZART Portable Activity Day, New Year's Day. The Christmas New Year holiday period is a great chance to get on the air. Accordingly, New Zealand's National Society NZART is promoting New Year's Day 1 January 2019 as a portable activity day. This is an opportunity to get outdoors and operate knowing there will be others doing the same. As an activity day, this is not a contest, so it's up to you know where, when and how you operate. There will be a lot of summits on the air activity on this day, said L and VK. Owing to his being able to claim double activation points while operating either side of 0000 Zulu hours, 1 January ETC, 1 pm NZDST. You could therefore activate a SOTA summit, or if that is a bit too much, participate in the NZART Awards program by activating a lake, lighthouse, or national park. Make sure you know the rules before you start. Alternatively, you could just park up at your favourite spot and make a few QSOs. Apart from SOTA, which stresses the portable activity without your station being connected to a motor vehicle, you are free to use any method of portable operation you like. This could be a chance to take the family on a picnic, branch activity, or you could get together with a bunch of mates, hit the different places and meet up in the pub afterwards to swap the DX that got away stories. It is entirely up to you. It is also a great chance to test your portable emergency capability. There is no fixed operating period, although as a rule of thumb, SOTA activators will generally be operating between 12pm and 2pm NZDST, and you can operate as long as you like. Then, Saturday 12 and Sunday 13 January, the summer VHF UHF field day. May 4, the 20th Harry Angel Memorial Sprint. July 20, Trans Testament Labour and Contest. August 17, 18, VK Remembrance Day Contest. Through the DX window. Rolly ZL1BQD is QRV as P29RR from Papua New Guinea till the 4th of December. He will take part in the CQ WWCW contest on the 24th and 25th of November. QSLs go via his home call. Raw station A44A. Yes, A44A from Amman. Members of the Royal Amani Amateur Radio Society, ROARS, will activate their contest station A44A in Muscat. During the CQ WWDXCW contest this weekend is a multi-multi entry. QSL via A47RS. For VK1WIA National News, I'm Felix VK4FU QNingham. 
from Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service on RF, internet streaming and text at wia.org.au. Graham VK4 Baker Baker stepping in again with broadcast monitoring, shortwave listening, scanner news and wireless weather. Grand Tour Across All Continents, a DX contest. The Czechoslovakian DX Club's Grand Tour Across All Continents DX contest will be held from Friday, November 30 at 0000 UTC to Sunday, the 9th of December at 2400 UTC. It is open to all shortwave listeners regardless to their membership in any DX club. In wireless weather, a sunspot from the next solar cycle? Over the weekend last, a magnetically reversed sunspot appeared in the sun's northern hemisphere. Its high latitude and backwards magnetic polarity mark it as a member of the next solar cycle. So is solar minimum over? Not even close, but this development does suggest that Solar Cycle 25 is stirring. Learn more on spaceweather.com. Hello, I'm Bruce, VK3 Triple F from Sunny Bendigo. Worldwide Special Interest Group News, digital. New version of WSJTX. A new WSJTX release candidate, version 2.0.0 RC4, is available and the version 2.0 Quick Start Guide has been revised and extended. The developers urge anyone upgrading to the new version to read the release notes thoroughly. The upgrade requires users to change operator settings so the software may not work straight out of the box when upgrading from previous versions. The latest version of WSJTX also removes compatibility with earlier versions of the software in certain circumstances. WW Special Interest Group's Final Frontier, first geostationary amateur satellite. On Thursday, the 15th of November, a SpaceX Falcon 9 vehicle lifted off flawlessly at 2046 UTC from Cape Canaveral, carrying the first amateur radio payload designed for geostationary orbit. About 32 minutes after launch, SpaceX reports the spacecraft was successfully deployed into a geostationary transfer orbit. Positioned at 25.5 east, the satellite carries an amateur radio S-band and X-band payload capable of linking radio amateurs from Brazil to Thailand. The recent subject of an AMSAC UK colloquium presentation, SHAL-2, carries two Phase 4 non-inverting amateur radio transponders operating in a 2.4 GHz up and 10.45 gigahertz down configuration. This offers a 250 kilohertz bandwidth linear transponder intended for conventional analog operations plus an 8 megahertz bandwidth transponder for experimental digital modulation schemes and DVB amateur television. One that didn't get up the SpaceX Spaceflight SSOA SmallSat Express launch carrying the Fox 1 Cliff Amateur Radio CubeSat and several other amateur radio payloads has been delayed. SpaceX tweeted, Standing down from Monday's launch attempt of Spaceflight SSOA, SmallSat Express to conduct additional pre-flight inspections. Once complete, we will confirm a new launch date. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Radio Amateur Young Timers. Two IOSSW appointed Youth Committee Champion. The RSGB has appointed Sarah McGarvey, two IOSSW, into the new role of Youth Committee Champion. The role will include managing the UK attendance at the Yota Camp each year and Yota Month every December. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Rescue Radio. Radio Ham's assist vessel with ill crew member. ARRL reports amateur radio operators associated with the Maritime Mobile Service Network played a significant part in summoning medical assistance on November 9th. 
a crew member was suffering chest pains on board the 48-foot sailing vessel Marie Eleanor, some 300 miles east of Bermuda. The assistance we received from the amateur radio operators was crucial in helping us communicate with the vessel's crew, US Coast Guard Petty Officer First Travis Unser said afterwards. Unser was the search and rescue coordinator for the incident. MMSN member Donald Plunkett, VA6FH, heard a call for medical assistance at 1650 UTC on the net's 14.300 MHz frequency from Nick Cantro, KC2WRH, the captain of the Marie Eleanor. Cantro reported that a crew member was experiencing severe chest pains and needed medical assistance. Fellow MMSN operator Fred Moore, W3ZU of Florida, had good propagation with the Marie Eleanor and contacted the vessel, linking it via a phone patch to the US Coast Guard station in Norfolk, Virginia. The Coast Guard was able to connect the patient directly to medical personnel via the phone patch to ascertain symptoms and prescribe first aid measures prior to medical assistance arrival. Disaster drill challenges amateurs in Oregon. Perhaps only a drill, but the challenges were real. Not every ham is faced with responding to a double virus attack launched by terrorists. The first attack involved a deadly biological virus released intentionally into the population, followed by a second virus and an electronic one that knocked out cell phones, landlines and the internet. First, let's clarify something. This was just a test. The hams were part of a statewide ARA simulated emergency exercise in cooperation with the State Office of Emergency Management, and they were trained for what could someday be the real thing. According to Steve Fletcher, K7AA, Oregon's Grant County Arras Emergency Coordinator, participating hams faced numerous challenges. They were instructed to test Windlink in radio-only mode within a one-hour window, explore the best way to employ APRS for the tasks ahead, and of course establish clear communications between volunteer and government agencies while understanding the instructional materials guiding their procedures through the test. An HF net was also established on 75 metres in advance to avoid relay pileups. Steve said the ham's enthusiasm was stoked even more by a scenario called the MacGyver task, which occurred concurrently with the double virus scenario. In the simulation, the antennas on each local emergency operations centre were knocked out by bad weather. Steve told Amateur Radio Newsline in an email the hams concluded the one-day test happy but tired and better educated about what they'll need to do next time. I'm Bruce, VK3 Triple F. This is VK1 WIA. All points of contacts from today's news stories are to be found in print when you read the web editions. www.wia.org.au Let's go clubbing. It's the Tark Monster Christmas Lights Tour. Get out your Santa hats, flashy pins and Christmas costumes and get ready for a magical mystery tour of the Light Fantastic. The famous... Or is that the infamous Tark Monster Christmas Lights Tour is on again, happening Friday evening, December 21. It's a drive-yourself dazzling spectacular, and all mobile shack chariots will need to monitor 146.5 during the tour, this to hear instructions from the guide sleigh. If you do not have a 2 metre transceiver in your vehicle, don't worry, as a handheld will be lent to you. Now the tour will start from Townsville, gathering by 7pm, and then leaving when it's dark enough. Be sure to pack an esky with plenty of cool water and cool bananas as the tour will be happening in a dehydrating climate. The Monster Christmas Lights Tour organiser Gavin VK4 Zulu Zulu, with help from stage surveyors, is currently plotting a way around the city of Townsville, protected by the Powder Puff Girls. Now, are you a local ham putting on a light spectacular? Or, as a ham, have you spotted an outstanding display somewhere? Let Gavin know the suburb and street name so the display can be included in the tour. Now, don't be silly here. We don't need details of a display in downtown Willamaloo, Townsville. 
The tour should end by 10pm at a secret destination. Contact Gavin VK for Zulu Zulu for more details. So now to next year, the 2019 social scene, February 24 in VK2, it's the Wyong Field Day. March 23 to 24 in VK7, Meet the Voice event at Ross. April 6 in VK5, the BRL Radio Group Annual Gathering, Overland Corner, South Australia. September 2019, Scandinavian YL Operators Convention in Norway. And October 27, a little closer to home, VK3, Ballarat Amateur Radio Group's Bargfest Hamvention. Now till next we meet, I'm Graham, VK4BB. Walk softly. From Australia, this has been VK1WIA at the weekly WIA Amateur Radio News Service. On RF, we thank our rebroadcast team and you for listening. And remember, internet streaming and text of this news is available 24-7 at wia.org.au. Ik ben Onno van de podcast Foundations of Amateur Radio in Australia. En je luistert nu naar de Daily Minutes van Papa Alpha Zero Echo Tango Echo. Foundations of Amateur Radio. In our hobby there is a term, Elmer, referring to someone who helps new amateurs find their way inside the community, locate resources, understand techniques, etc. It's part of what we might consider the folklore of amateur radio. I started this with the intent to quickly introduce the concept of an Elmer, and then spend some time talking about our own role in this adventure. But, as is often the case, I was sidetracked by my own investigation. There is a push within the community to abandon the concept of an Elmer, that it's not real, that it serves no purpose, and that it's a recent invention and irrelevant to our community. Finding an Elmer today appears to be hard work, seeing the wood for the trees, finding a unicorn in this social media connected world. But as it turns out, Elmers are closer than you think. With a little searching, the person who is credited with introducing the word Elmer into the amateur radio vocabulary was Rod Whiskey 9 Bravo Romeo Delta. He was the author of a column House DX in QST magazine from 1947 through to 1978. In March of 1971 he wrote, Too frequently one hears a sad story in this little nutshell. Oh, I almost got a ticket too, but Elmer Whiskey 9 X-Ray Yankee Zulu moved away and I kind of lost interest. Sure, the guy could have burned through on his own, maybe, but he, like others, wound up an almost ham. No more Elmer. We need those Elmers. All the Elmers, including the ham who took the most time and trouble to give you a push toward your license, are the birds who keep this great game young and fresh. Rod was first licensed in 1937 as a 14-year-old. He became a silent key in 2012. On the face of it, we have this idea that an Elmer is someone who helps you get your amateur license. But it started me thinking, what if Elmer wasn't a phrase, but a reference? The name Elmer is a male name from Old English, meaning noble and famous. What if W9XYZ wasn't an actual call sign, but an example, given that Rod was licensed as Whiskey 9 Bravo Romeo Delta, It will be simple to think of XYZ as a random suffix, much like I might use Victor Kilo 6 XYZ, which happens to be a non-existent call at the moment. What if Rod was saying, oh, I almost got a ticket too, but Peter VK6LB or Paul VK5PAS or Mary VK4PZ moved away and I kind of lost interest. Instead of using real amateurs like I just did, Rod wanted to use a generic name, someone noble and famous, with a generic call sign, not to single out a particular person. The reference to Elmer takes on a whole different meaning. It means anyone, you, me, the amateur at your club, anyone who can help another person become an amateur. As it turns out, Elmer is all of us. It's a way to refer to anyone and everyone. It's not a specific role or purpose. It's the invitation to you to help another amateur. This of course means that you need to step up. You don't need to put on your Elmer cape and become a superhero. You just need to be part of the community to ask questions, to help with discovering answers and to encourage investigation into this exciting pursuit of amateur radio. So, are you an Elmer? And if not, what are you going to do about it? I'm Ono, Victor Kilo 6, Foxtrot, Lima, Alpha Bravo.
Deze inmiddels zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf s ochtends herhaald. Alle mail is welkom op het adres x, xdvme Dat is ook te vinden rechts bovenaan de webpagina van de uitzending in www.pa0ete.nl. De Daily Minutes toont iedere dag weer aan de hand van schokkende voorbeelden hoe een hobby mensenlevens kan veranderen. De internetfaciliteiten en studio hardware voor Daily Minutes worden gesponsord door 70 megahertzshop.nl. 70 mhzshop.nl
Heb ik een phone naar retour?